Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Last week we made this ring with vintage tin and I showed you how to solder on the tin. And then I put up a second video uh, showing you how to make a vintage patina. So how to do the, the dark patina. I don't know if we can, if I can get that to focus to show you, but anyway, it's a good thing I put up this <laughs> a second video. You know, I did the first one with the soldering and the tin and then the second video I wasn't really going to do, and then it was kind of an afterthought, and I was like, oh, I should just show you how to do the vintage patina while I'm at it, and I ended up putting that video up like the next day, and I'm glad I did, because let me tell you, last week, let's just say I got bitten by the bug that we've all been trying to avoid for the past two years, my daughter and I both, and it wasn't too bad. I thought I had a really bad sinus infection. I was really fortunate to be able to get a prescription for this, which really helped um, because I'm high risk with asthma. So yeah, I was down for the count for a good few days and I am back now with an update or two for you. And we'll be back to our art and jewelry making videos right away as well. Basically after, you know, being kind of out of it for a week, you know, you have to get your house back in order. I do, you know, help take care of my mom who's 88 years old. And, um, you know, my daughter has her prom this weekend, of course. And, you know, there's always a lot going on. I'm really glad to get back into my workshop. It's finally nice out. And, you know, we've got some nice warm weather coming up, hopefully. Yeah, after being sick, and uh, having that, you know, basically making a nest on the couch for, for almost a week, I was starting to get the itch again, like, oh, I really need to, you know, get back to creating and making videos and our jewelry and everything that we do. And uh, the first thing I did was I, I decided to do a little bit of graphic design. And um, I have a Society6 shop where I do a little bit of graphic art and I do some pretty basically simple watercolors and I have those in there as like surface design for uh, like linens and blankets and towels and shower curtains and all kinds of things and that's a really nice way to be creative and you know not have to be you know going into my workshop or like doing anything like you know physically <laughs> exhausting or, or or too hard mentally because I can basically just sit with a laptop and make art so I eased my way back into it and so yeah, the fog has been cleared, but now it's like I have to kind of reorganize everything that I was going to do in my head because you know when, you, when you're when you a multitasker and you're doing all these different things, you, you kind of keep it all in your head like, oh, I'm gonna do this and I'm working on this and I'm working on this. And then, you know, now it's kind of like, what was I doing again? <laughs> so yeah, a week down for the count can really mess up your plans, but now we are back on track. Okay, one little thing that happened that I can talk about is we had a book snafu and <laughs> this was like completely unexpected. I told you in my last vlog post how I was discussing with my publisher that's Penguin Random House about reverting the rights of Soldered Alchemy back to me and he basically just said, you know, let me know when you're ready, you know, figure out you know, all the ins and outs of it. And I'm like, okay, and you know, of course I have all these other things I'm doing at the same time. And while I'm kind of planning that out and figuring what I need to do to self-publish or to take it to another publisher, I'm, like I said, I'm going to do the self-publishing most likely. And I went on Amazon and I'm just looking to see like where my books were at that point. And um, I, well, my first book, is boho chic jewelry and this one was from like 2013 and i was surprised to see this is still on amazon's bestseller list for crafts it's at like number 53 or at least it was when i looked at it they go up and down all the time and um uh, you know this is the one that we're trying to you know get back into publication but so i'm looking and i'm like scrolling through and wondering like well let's see like how many you know books were published since like the whole you know, past two years and everything that's been going on, right? And <clears throat> so I'm looking and I'm just scrolling through and, you know, there's a lot of uh, the same titles you see and there's, you know, those really good popular books. And, and then, you know, there's a lot of people who are doing self-publishing and I came to realize something called low content books that people publish. And I guess, <laughs> you know, if you don't know about like, 
uh, KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing. If you don't know about that, then you're probably not familiar with it, but um, it's a really big thing that people have been doing, I guess, for years. And, you know, to each his own, it's basically um, self-publishing like a blank journal. And people use like pre-made graphics that they're allowed to use. And, you know, they publish these you know, they're called low content books. And not just are they blank books like journals, but there are some that are just, you know, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. it's low content, there might be like 20 or 25 pages. And of course, the words are like really big print. And, you know, it's how to do this or how to do that. And it most of them have low stars because the content and I'm talking about like jewelry making, the content is just not doesn't have enough meat, you know, it's, it's just really not there. And people do this as a way to earn money. And so I'm scrolling through and I'm like, hmm, well, let's see, you know, what kind of jewelry books are there. And, you know, anything like with, you know, my kind of stuff that I'm interested in, maybe some soldering and what do I find? Hey, that cover looks really familiar. Yep. Somebody literally took the cover of my book, Soldered Alchemy, which I'll show it to you again if you haven't seen it, and they cut this entire part off the top, and my name, of course, and they used my cover image to make a soldering book. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> and I'm like, I write back to my guy at Penguin Random House and I'm like, by the way, before we transfer those rights, <laughs> while you're still, you know, protecting me, uh, take a look at this. And he said, well, you go here and you report it and, you know, you can report it to, you know, Penguin Random House because when you're under contract, they, um, you know, they're holding those contracts for you and they're going to go after people who are copying you or infringing you. So... I also reported it through Amazon and of course there's a digital version and a print version and they have to, you know, it takes them a day to look at it and this and that. And they were immediately taken down within like 24 hours. And I'm like, all right. So I'm like, well, let's see what else is out there. <laughs> right. And I'm scrolling more and I'm looking more, scrolling down a page or two and this and that. Wait a minute. That photo looks familiar too. Guess what? another person pulled an image out of Soldered Alchemy and wrote a how-to solder book and used my image from my book on the on the cover of their book. And I'm going to show you which image it is because it's not one of my cover images. Oh, let's see if I can find it quickly. Oh, this one. This is a uh, Crystal Points necklace project from my book, Soldered Alchemy. And my daughter actually has this necklace because she asked for it. And here I am looking at someone's book on Amazon with my necklace on the cover. And <laughs> there's another picture on their cover. I think it was like three pictures and it had a hand slaughtering. And my daughter looked at that and she said, how your hand is on someone else's book. And I said, well, you know what? That picture is not me. That's from somebody else's book. And I don't know who. And, you know, if you are a person who is a, you know, writer who is, a, you know, one of my jewelry making friends or, or someone who's writing books, you know, you should really check and see what's out there. And I reported it to, uh, you know, Penguin Random House. And they have a team that works on that. Like, and they are immediate and pretty you know, they're, they're not messing around. You don't want to mess around with a major publisher. So yeah, if you're going to do something like that, like do your own photos, don't take somebody else's photos, especially somebody who is with like a major publisher and whose work is seen all over the place. So that was interesting. And of course, you know, it doesn't like it bothered me for a minute and then it doesn't because I know it's taken care of, but it's just showing you like, first of all, for somebody to like write, and I use these little quotes, like they're writing a book, because it really isn't, you know, it's just, it's garbage, really, that they can't even make a project that they can show on that cover, that they have to use mine. What I'm saying is, when you get a 
buy a book. You want to be learning from an expert. I'm an expert in soft soldering. I've been doing it for many years. You know, I've got books on it and DVDs and all that. But, you know, you have to really be discerning. Hmm, how do I say it? Yeah, you want to really be careful with what you buy. And there's people who are basically selling you nothing. I mean, you can find the information on YouTube or on the internet for a lot of basic jewelry making. And it's not just jewelry making or soldering. It's like all kinds of crafts. The one, and it, it was a woman's name who did the second book. She had about maybe eight or nine books. And every cover looked pretty much the same. It was like in the same format. It had like a title and then it had like three photos. And of course, like I said, the first photo on the soldering book was like my blue crystal necklace. And she pulled that photo, either she had my book, and which I doubt, she probably found it on the internet and, you know, used my photo. But there's two other photos on there too. And I know that that person who wrote that book, I, I'd be willing to bet, I shouldn't say I know, but I'd be willing to, really, really willing to bet that the, those are not, you know, that person's photos as well, that those are also probably pilfered from somewhere else. Anyway, this person had a book on resin jewelry. She had a book on wire wrapped jewelry. There was a book on felting and um, basket making and pottery, just like, you know, your basics. And the photos on the covers, maybe she got permission to use them. I highly doubt it because she sure didn't have my permission. But yeah, so that happened. <laughs> And that was really crazy. And people have a lot of nerve, you know. Uh, if someone would have asked me, can I use one of your photos because I'm going to be doing this book and I want to say, you know, well, you know, Laura made this project and this is an example of what you can do. You know, maybe we could have worked something out. I've had someone contact me years ago who worked for, uh, they were a writer, I think, and they were writing a book about, uh, dinnerware, like China dinnerware. And I forget which company it was. It was one of the big companies. And they saw that I had made a piece of joy and they said, can I use this photo? And I said, sure, you know, and they put a credit in whatever. And uh, so, yeah, that was that craziness, right? Isn't that insane? So imagine, you know, that you're browsing Amazon and it's like, hey, you know, there's a book with my photos on the cover. It's like, seriously? Yeah, seriously. So, the nerve of people. And uh, the second, also, I have to add one last thing. So I'll say that, you know, the first book I saw that was a, a man author, male author, and the second one was the female author. Well, the female author one who had like all these, who, and they're still up there, who has all these other books um, about, you know, this craft and that craft. And they're each like 20, 25, they're not more than 25 pages long. And that's not all text, you know, it's filler, you know. I know what I was going to say. So the woman who copied my crystal necklace or used my photo on her cover, who has these other books, <clears throat> of course, I did a, a Google search then. And she has this book listed in all these booksellers. It's like, I guess, is it syndicated? I don't know. All these booksellers all across the I don't want to say globe, but all across the United States, there was one in England as well, one in the UK, one, you know, here and there. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, so if I get a lawyer and I say, I want payment for every time, you know, that you're showing my work, my photo, and how would they do that? Like, let's say it's on like, um, a bookseller's page. Let's say it's on our Amazon page and let's say that they find out that that page was viewed 10,000 times. And I say, well, I want, you know, a penny every time that page was viewed, you know, not that they have to buy the book, but just that someone is seeing that photo. You're showing my copyright protected work as not only are you showing it as yours, but you're, you're showing it, you know? And, you know, if I had, if I charged like, let's say I sued him and I said, okay, I want a penny every time that, you know, you're in this book. Like I said, it was on 20 different websites. Imagine if each of those pages were looked at 10,000 times or, or even more, or maybe less, whatever. But that's what you're messing around with people. They just, you know, I don't know if they're that bold and brazen, you know, that they just do it because they think they're going to get away with it. Or if they're just 
dumb. <laughs> Maybe they're just dumb. I don't know. So yeah, so that happened. And um, what else? So yeah, another hurdle of wasted time that's keeping me from the important stuff. So yeah, it's already low content <laughs> to begin with. And they're using my photos. Like how much minus negative content could you possibly get? So I just wanted to share that story. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty crazy. Uh, the things people will do. Oh, 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 there's another one. <laughs> Hold on, I need a drink of my seltzer. So after I looked up the soldering, you know, soldered alchemy and found the soldered alchemy photos, <clears throat> I thought, well, I'm going to put in Boho Chic Jewelry, which is my first book. Now, you know, Boho Chic is a style. So, you know, it's, it's not a a copyright or a trademark or anything. There's boho chic this and boho chic that. And I mean, this was at the forefront. This was, or I've made this in, I wrote this in 2012, I think. So, you know, it's been around a while. It's gotten, you know, very popular. And I'm saying the name boho chic's gotten very popular as well as a style. And uh, I thought, well, I'm going to search and see if there's any, you know, body who took my pictures from this book and so I type in boho chic jewelry and I hit search and I see my book comes up number you know number one it's the only thing called boho chic jewelry and I scroll down and guess what I guess what's there guess what I found a blank journal a blank journal and the title was boho chic jewelry and I'm thinking it's a blank journal it has nothing to do with jewelry. It is a lined notebook, a composition book, white pages with lines to write words in. <laughs> and the title was Boho Chic Jewelry. And I thought, hmm, that's kind of weird. Well, maybe they think the cover's like Boho Chic. It was just like stripes. And I scrolled down more and there's another one called Boho Chic Jewelry and another and another and another. There were almost one hundred blank journals entitled boho chic jewelry and i'm like what the heck right so <laughs> i sent them off to uh penguin random house and i'm like i don't know if they're gonna do anything it's it's not photos it's just my title and uh, it's very deceptive so you know if somebody's searching for the best-selling book boho chic jewelry and finds a hundred blank journals it kind of um like makes a traffic jam you know and they're getting to the forefront of traffic by using the title of a popular book. Anyway, so every cover was different designs, you know, and the basic graphics that you can get online. You can buy them, you can, you know, use them from, there's websites where you can get free graphics and you can make designs. And I'm thinking the title was exactly the same for every book. So I write to Amazon again. I'm like, what about this? Well, Amazon writes back to me and they say, you know what? You can't copyright a title. It's a string of words. Fair enough, you know, but it's still not right what they're doing. You know, that they're using my title to bring in, you know, this traffic. And I just think it's pretty crappy <laughs> to tell you the truth. I think it's pretty crappy, but you can search for it and they're still up. As far as I know, they're all still up. And I think it's just very deceptive. You know, it's deceptive. And um, so, yeah, that's that crazy story. How weird is that? But I don't lose any sleep over it. One other thing I wanted to say was someone left me a comment and I don't have, I'm sorry, I don't have your name in front of me right now, asked about copyright uh, about a week or two ago on one of my YouTube videos. They said, oh, you mentioned, you know, gently about, you know, copyright and, and that she was watching another YouTuber who does jewelry, who was uh, maybe like a little harsh about, you know, well, you know, people are uh, protective of what they create. And now I'm not a lawyer, but I can tell you this, and this is not legal advice, <laughs> and I'm not a lawyer, but I can tell you this, that once you create something, it is automatically covered or protected under United States copyright law. There are things that can be copyrighted and other things that can't be copyrighted. Uh, we're talking basically the like the fixed way that something is designed. For example, 
I made this little kind of mosaic heart and it's I call them like my little sailor's valentine's hearts and the way that I did this I can say okay that's you know I created this so this is automatically protected under copyright law now if someone overseas or wherever sees this and decides to like you know let's say they want to make them in plastic because you're not going to be able to find all this exact china and put it in the exact you know maybe you can I don't know some people are kind of kind of crazy right <laughs> so anyway let's say that someone like you know in another country or wherever decides to you know manufacture these and like makes like let's say it's like resin or plastic you know but it's exactly the same like it's like taking a photo but turning that photo into like a physical you know item let's say like in plastic well they're breaking copyright law because this is this is my expression of how these elements are put together in this certain way in this fixed form and you know a f way that you can further protect your work is to publish it and publishing can be in the form of taking a photo and putting it on Instagram and you can't just take a photo at home and be like okay it's published no it means you know you're putting that out to the public so like in a video or you know in a book or even like in your shop if you have a shop and you sell things and there are <sighs> different degrees of how much something can be copied uh, it, things are always influenced by other things in art you know that's just how it is but to make a carbon copy of something you don't want to do that you could get in, you're going to get in trouble for that and you know it can be big it can be a big deal it, it can be a lot so yeah so I just wanted to touch about on that a little bit because she wasn't somebody asked me about the copyright like I said I'm not a lawyer and this isn't legal advice but I can tell you that when you create an artwork or a design of something it is immediately protected under US copyright law now you can register your copyright which means you know you can go to like, somewhere in the United States government website you can just fly just flew by you can register your copyright by going to the United States government website looking up about how to do that there's forms to fill out I'm sure you have to pay a fee and you know then it's like boom in print like you know you're not messing around then like you have like solid proof of you know that you were the first to do this in this certain way or whatever but yeah that's you know just very very lightly touching on that so on a final note, I have a field trip I'm going on next weekend. I am part of a uh, Earth Science Association and I collect not just rocks and crystals, but I love fossils and archaeology and historical things. I'm just crazy about history and I'm going on a field trip next weekend for fossils and I hope to film a little bit. Hopefully I'll have some good finds so I'll have something interesting to film and I thought that would be fun so maybe I'll do a little video about that and it's a really special field trip that we had to have you know some state permission to get to this special place and that you know, no one else can go to so it's it's going to be pretty cool so hopefully i can do a little video about that and yeah i love to collect fossils and rocks and crystals and also i live in an area with a really large native american heritage so we do find a lot of those types of things as well. We find arrowheads and uh, chips, which are the, the pieces that come off when, you know, people were making arrowheads thousands of years ago. And I found two that are pretty cool that maybe one day I'll share those. But yeah, field trip next week. Fun. Yay. Getting back to doing some jewelry making and making some videos and getting the book stuff all situated. And finally, healthy, and I hope you are healthy and happy and enjoying spring. And thank you for watching. <laughs> and I will be back very soon with a new video for you. And thanks for joining me for this. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye, guys. crazy infringers. Ugh, I don't know what people are thinking. Really, seriously. Hey.